All right, now Brandon is going to fire the cannon. Go ahead. Time to defend our ship. Try this. So here we are in St. Augustine, Florida. Not to see the Castillo de San Marcos. We've already seen that. But no, we're here to check out the Pirate and Treasure Museum. Ooh, things cost while oh, we can go. Time to cross the road. Here we are at the St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum featured on the History Channel and Antiques Roadshow and CNN. This is one I've been excited about. All right, Jen, you ready to go learn some pirate history and pirate lore and some treasures and some yeah. cool stuff? Yep. I'm super excited for this one. We learned about the defense of St. Augustine and now we're gonna learn about the pirates of St. Augustine. <laughs> so if you're ready, let's go learn about some pirates. And just outside the entrance, they have the good old Jolly Roger sailing in the wind. So it says here, welcome to Port Royal, Jamaica. Whoa. That would have been a cannon that fired just now. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Yeah, there's an interactive whole scavenger. Oh, there. yeah. I just don't know what we're supposed to look. It says, this is Port Royal, so it says, search for discovery drawers. Twelve of them are hidden in drawers and cabinets throughout the museum. Look for the wooden blocks like this. Attach to your discovery drawers and write what you find in any of the twelve squares. In no particular order. Okay. You gotta find them all, show your, us your map, and win a pirate treasure. Ooh! <laughs> Looks like here's some artifacts that were discovered off the coast of Florida. There's a lot of that. So while I'm looking at all the interesting history, Jen's There's doing history. An interactive game. This must be that drawer they were talking about. It says chart a course, and it's an old map of St. Augustine. And a charting kit. Okay. <laughs> Pretty neat. Yeah. Check out all the flintlock firearms they had back in the day. Iron shots, boarding axe. Man, these pirates were pretty ruthless. Are these the ones that attack St. Oh, yes. Yeah. So here's a figure of a doctor performing surgery on the guy below. I'm not going to show it because it's kind of gruesome, but it involves eyeballs. You'll see that these uh, instruments were used for every surgical need. Wow, like a tourniquet, like he's using right here. And you can't forget the bottle of mead. Can't forget the bottle of mead. So I'm talking around. A cannon. So this is an interesting little exhibit here. On the left you have Sir Francis Drake and on the right Robert Searles. Now these two people wouldn't have met in real life because they're about 80 years apart. But it does show different things inside the exhibit. So you've got a map of Jamaica which is right here. Zoom in so you can see that. And then they've also got the pieces of eight right next to it and a Spanish helmet on the wall right over here. It's kind of interesting. What's he holding in his hand? A pocket compass sundial. Wow. And Jen found another clue. Ace in the hole. It says gambling was not allowed on pirate ships, but they were pirates. Cards and dice were some of the most common types of gaming played during the golden age of piracy. Wooden dice were easy to carve and cards were easy to come by. Although this set is gorgeously adorned with detailed artwork, it would have been most val more valuable than most. Jen, you found another clue. 
Games, games of Chance. So James Fox. It says here this Napoleonic French Prisoner of War Ivory and Wood Games Box contains 92 pieces, including a set of carved bone playing cards. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, games like these Very were a detailed, great though. way to pass the time on board ships where pirates would travel thousands of miles without stopping at any port. This is pretty cool. They made it look like you're walking onto the deck of a ship. And Jen is piloting the ship. <laughs> Let's take a look at the captain's cabin. The original Jolly Roger of 1850. That's kind of neat looking. Not as intimidating as uh, modern day renditions of it. And in the captain's cabin is a pirate who's having sweet dreams. He's breathing, that's so creepy. Am I gonna wake him up if I open this door? Maybe. Look out. That was a cannon. Oh, the black ink of the Jolly Roger itself. It says here that this colonial American woodblock features a skull and crossbones emblem. This symbol would have been used to mark merchant and military deaths on board ships and on tombstones of the time. It was the general symbol of death. It was perfect for pirates to use as their calling card. It says here that only two pirate flags still exist, and this right here is one of them. So it says the name Jolly Roger probably came from the French words Jolie Rouge, meaning pretty red, and referring to the days when the pirate flags were often red. Now we're back on the main deck of the ship, and it talks about the different types of knots that pirates used. And it says that they have a clove hitch here, the reef knot, which is down at the bottom here, and the sailor's knot right here, and the bowline. Wow. Looks like Jen found another clue. This one's hard to open. What is this? Uh, I Finding the way. This navigational device has several interesting embellishments on it. The ivory compass depicts a Chinese zodiac on the face featuring a yin and yang mark along with three characters. That's a cool one. I wouldn't want a compass if it looked like that. Oh, Blackbeard talking to us. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> I hailed him from Bristol, England originally, but my mainstay these past years has been the high seas. I got me started as a privateer in Queen Anne's War, ambushing French and Spanish frigates. Soon afterwards, I was awarded a ship of me own and did what I do best. Ransacked me way from the West Indies to the coast of New England and back again. It says here that Edward Teach, known as Blackbeard, was famous for his blood-curdling looks and terrifying manner. And it said that Blackbeard died during a bloody battle in North Carolina was killed by the Royal Navy's Lieutenant Robert Maynard. Says that the cause of death was decapitation. And something tells me he didn't talk <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. So ignore Blackbeard's talking head as we find these clues. There's two of them here. What do we have here? Lashes. Ten lashes and nine tails. Oh, this is how they... What does it say? Getting so whipped lit. by a cat of nine tails was very painful. A pirate would tie a victim to the mast with their back facing out and lash them. Oh my goodness. That sounds incredibly painful. We'll close that right back up. There's another one down here. Oh yeah. It might be bad because it's... Uh -oh. Tortures and punishment. Whoa. Marooned. A Corsair flintlock. If a pirate broke the code, he might be dropped off a secluded island. Oh, that's just like uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah. He got marooned. And it says surviving on one's own was tough in those days. And usually the difficulty and the mental breakdown would get the best of the pirates. Many times these pistols were the only way out. 
Dang. Oh, check it out. Rare treasure ahead. Look how like shiny it is. <laughs> You're right. Rare treasure. Riches of Port Royale. Wow. It looks like this whole room is full of different... It's a lot lighter than the other ones. Pirate treasures. I oh. found a thing. Yep, you're right. What's in here? Silver, silver mule train. Okay, what does this say? It says both Sir Francis Drake and Henry Morgan raided the silver mule train. The Spanish used the pathway known as El Camino Rail. I can't hardly see that. As El Camino Real, the Royal Road, as a way to transport their riches found in Peru. Interesting. And look, you could even touch a 400 year old treasure chest. Might need some hand sanitizer, Jen. Yep. No worries, there's plenty of hand sanitizer around, Jen. Yeah. Pirate hand sanitizer. Smells pretty good. Yeah, pretty good? Like quality. Oh, okay. It says here that in September 23rd, 1622, the Atoka and seven other ships were lost off the Florida Keys. The cargo and treasure of the smash ship were scattered across 50 miles of ocean floor following the storm. The Atoka and her treasure remained dis undisturbed for more than 350 years and were found in the sea. That's pretty. That is cool very pretty. Stuff. It says that this is a serpent which is clutching stones including lapis, emerald, opal, and sapphire. Wow. It says here that just over 300 years ago in Surat, India, a mountain of silver rupees was placed on board an Indian trader bound for the riches of the Orient by way of the spice route. And it says here, the coin clump below is one of only three coin masses recovered from the trader that sunk in this area. This is kind of cool. Like the elephant. The, the background's like a carpet almost. Yeah, that is weird. Interesting. It actually has underneath each one that the artifacts above are on loan from the Florida Division of Historical Resources. They are, in fact, genuine. And in this next room is an homage to Hollywood's version of pirates. You might remember Captain Hook from the world famous Peter Pan. That's a classic. Oh, there's another pirate drawer. TikTok. TikTok. Oh, whoa, it closed on you. Don't be alarmed, the saltwater crocodile finally coughed up the clock. Unfortunately for Captain Hook, his hands must have tasted better than the metal timepiece. Better luck next time. And there's Captain Hook's hook from Hook. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the original hook from Peter Pan. That's kind of cool. And there's an animation cell from the movie Peter Pan. It's kind of neat. And one of my favorite movies growing up, Hook, directed by Steven Spielberg. And you'll see they actually have a replica from the movie Hook from 1991. It looks here we got another drawer. Goonies. The Goonies. Another great movie. One-Eyed Willie's treasure map that held many hidden features which were always overlooked by the Goonies. The Spanish doubloon drilled with the odd shaped holes as a clue to lead to One-Eyed Willie's Hoard of hidden treasure. Now I want to watch the Goonies. Yeah, again. I love the Goonies. They have a bunch of Goonies stuff over there. They here. do. One eyed Willie himself right in front of us. Mm. That's fun. And the Goonies movie poster with the spyglass. How fun. One eyed Willie, you're so scary. Good to see you, One eyed Willie. And right here they have Captain Jack's. Sword from Captain Jack Sparrow and Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean. And it looks like they've got the medallion 
from Curse of the Black Pearl. When I was, I still have it. I think I have a necklace that has that on it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> It says here that although it's hard to see, the blade retracts into itself, creating the illusion of stabbing when used in battle. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see it right off to the side there. That's how it does it. That's kind of fun. Hollywood magic. It says here that this Aztec coin was one of only a few gold coins created for the film and the movie producer's choice of an Aztec coin as opposed to any other ancient culture is interesting. Aztec is the naughty word for people from Aztlan, a mythological place for the naughty speaking culture. It seems to fit with the supernatural undertone of the film. And there it is. That's cool. Right there. That looks way better than the necklace that I have. It says here that the writers of the Pirates of the Caribbean did not want to produce a straightforward and romanticized film on pirates. Enter the Cursed Aztec Coin. The addition of the supernatural spin to the plot created a sense of historical fantasy and became the driving force behind the entire film. So Jen is going to demonstrate firing the cannon. You take that I'm and you red to watch red. it. Maybe? Good job, Jen. <laughs> You're a great pirate. And now I'm gonna lift this musket. You're gonna lift the musket? Oh my god. Is that really heavy? Over 10 pounds. <laughs> it's, it's pretty heavy. And then we found our last clue. Oh, it's a skeleton in the closet. A shot in the gut. Oh, cannonball. wow. That's what it looks like to get a cannonball in the gut. Yikes. All right, now Brandon is going to fire the cannon. Go ahead. Time to defend our ship. Try this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that's fun, isn't it? That was. So that's gonna do it for us here at the Pirate and Treasure Museum here in St. Augustine, Florida. Yeah. Jen, did you learn about pirates and treasure? Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many uh, different types of pirates out there. Yeah. There's Captain Kidd, there's Blackbeard, those are the big ones, but there's a bunch of smaller name pirates that they actually had artifacts in there. They wreaked havoc. They wreaked havoc mm -hmm. in the uh, St. Augustine in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So if you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. We like doing these St. Augustine type of things, something different than yeah. Orlando. It was fun. It was a bit of a drive, but it was fun. Yeah. If you want to join our adventures, Jen, tell them what to do. Make sure to tap that subscribe button and tap that notification bell to become a super subscriber. And until next time, see you real soon. See you real soon. soon.